All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Jody Fanto from uh, Harvard University's Division of Continuing Education. Specifically, I'm the Director of Software Engineering for the Distance Education Group. So you're probably left thinking, boy, that's a lot of, <laughs> that, that, that's a lot of words. Um, so let me give you uh, a little background. So Harvard is a huge place. Um, uh, it's made up of about 15 different degree uh, granting schools which are very separate from each other. Uh, so the Division of, of Continuing Education, DCE, is just one of these 15. So when you think of Harvard University, that would be everything. That's not us. We're just the, the, the DCE box up there. So the distance education group <coughs> is focused uh, differently, I think, than many, many of the other adopters here. Specifically, we're focused only on online education. Um, so we produce uh, th several thousand hours of video each semester, about 250 hours per week. Uh, we've seen consistent growth, about 15% year over year in student registrations. And this is a key point. So we're funded not by Harvard's multi-hundred billion dollar endowment or whatever it is, but rather <coughs> directly from the students who sign up for our distance courses. So, <coughs> pardon me, our business model is in, in a way much simpler than the rest of Harvard. Uh, students sign up to take our courses, they cost about $2,000 each. Uh, that money then funds all of the work that, that I and my team do. Um, so, just to give you some sense of uh, where we fit in the whole thing. So I want to introduce you to our team. Uh, <clears throat> so let's start with senior leadership. Uh, Huntington Lambert is our new dean. Uh, he came about a year and a half ago. He's brought us lots of new energy and new ideas. Uh, you can see Henry Leitner here sliding into third base. Uh, he has a sense of humor and he's also brilliant. He's our chief innovation officer. Uh, James Peregrino is our director of operations, uh, also academic technology. Uh, Rebecca Nesson is our Director of Course Development and Production. So <coughs> this is an area where we, uh, I think, differ, again, from, from other schools. We have a production staff, but professional videographers, uh, professional editors of about 16 people. So large staff that goes out and records all, all of our lectures. So then in software, we have four leaders. Uh, I'm at the top. Uh, Reinhard Engels is our Associate Director of Software Engineering. He's also a Principal Engineer. Reinhard will be giving a talk remotely. He, he couldn't be here. Uh, he's in Boston. <coughs> but he'll be giving a talk remotely on Friday about visualizing Matterhorn workflows. Um, uh, Root Santos is a newly elected committer. Um, Root is, I think, still upstairs finishing her uh, talk with Phoebe Miller about uh, doing live encoding for Matterhorn. Uh, Dan Collis Perot is our other principal engineer. Dan will be giving a talk remotely on Friday again. <coughs> His talk will be about sort of the Harvard DCE rendition of the Paella player. Then we have our, our collection of software engineers. Uh, so Karen Dolan, uh, also a committer. Um, uh, will be giving a talk, I believe, on Friday about metadata synchronization into Matterhorn. Uh, Phoebe Miller just finished giving her talk with Ruth Santos about live, uh, live encoding. Uh, Naomi Mawakawa um, just gave <coughs> uh, a talk on our, our move into Amazon's cloud, into AWS. Uh, I'll get into a little bit more detail about that in a moment. Jay Luker. Um, Will, uh, is uh, remote. He will be giving a talk with Reinhard Engels on Friday uh, about visualizing student usage stats. Uh, he's done some, some work to make that look kind of fancy. And then, of course, Greg Logan, longtime Matterhorn committer. <coughs> he's uh, a long-term consultant for us. So then uh, we also have uh, a couple AV people and a couple uh, QA people. So Gabe Russell is this, a unique combination of a software engineer with a degree in video production. 
uh, Gabe and Kenny will be giving a talk again remotely on Friday about um, our efforts to build out our AV uh, in, in different classrooms as well as <coughs> our experiences with different vendor capture agents. Uh, Judy Kelly uh, is, is our other um, <coughs> QA person. So here's the tough news. Uh, about three years ago, Central Harvard IT, not, not uh, DC, which I work for, but sort of central IT that has influence over many of those 15 uh, different uh, schools at Harvard. Uh, they rolled out a pilot of Matterhorn. Uh, it was initially a wonderful success, and then for various reasons, it crumbled and fell. Uh, so that had the unfortunate effect that now central IT <coughs> is pushing everyone all schools at Harvard towards media site. So it's a challenging environment to work in. But Matterhorn is thriving at Harvard DC. Uh, we're going all in uh, to make Matterhorn work. Uh, our philosophy basically is if we can make Matterhorn at DC fantastic, then that is the most persuasive argument we can use as to why we should be using Matterhorn and uh, not media site. Uh, so <coughs> Matterhorn is currently in production, uh, though it's the secondary system. Our legacy system <coughs> is the primary capture and delivery uh, service, but students get a link to take them to our Matterhorn presentation. Uh, our legacy system is standard deaf and is aging. It's still functional, but uh, Matterhorn looks fantastic with, in all its HD glory. Uh, in about three or four months, we'll be switching to Matterhorn as the primary. So we already have students using it, but we expect usage to, to increase dramatically. And then over time, our goal is to retire our legacy system completely. So our students are also a bit different. Um, right? these, are <coughs> these are all students who are taking things uh, as a distance course. <coughs> some students are sort of hybrids. They come to some lectures. They don't come to other lectures. Um, but other students are, for example, in other countries or uh, other time zones. So that has many implications for us. Uh, the second point is pretty key. So <coughs> since there is no um, opportunity for students in Africa or Asia or even other states outside of Cambridge, to come to a classroom experience, Matterhorn becomes the primary learning mechanism for them, right? So this has some interesting implications. Specifically, every lecture, regardless of what happens in real life, what happens with your capture agents, has to be recorded, published, and delivered to our students within 24 hours. So <coughs> if everything breaks down, we have to resort to the professor giving the lecture again. That's how seriously this reliability component is taken. Um, our goal is to have things turned around in 24 hours or less. Uh, it's been as short as three hours after a lecture has started. Um, <coughs> another thing that perhaps makes us a little different is we're shooting for very high quality in, in every respect. Um, uh, the dean often talks about <coughs> Harvard DC is going after students who want a high touch experience. That, that is, they want uh, very high quality video. They want it, it delivered in a timely fashion. They want contact with TAs and professors, these sorts of things. Uh, so <coughs> along those lines, we record, record both uh, a presenter and a presentation video at 1080p, sort of very high bit rate. <coughs> um, frame accuracy then between those streams is very important, so we get it less than a tenth of a second, a few frames uh, potentially off. Um, <coughs> and then, uh, of course, as I mentioned, we hire <coughs> only professional videographers and uh, video production staff. Uh, we're working towards having uh, towards using a CDN so that students 
regardless of where they are in the world geographically, uh, get a very high performance. Another requirement is that many of our classes use live streaming. <coughs> So not only do we want live streaming, but we want it 100% uptime, which is challenging because computers often break. Um, but that's, that's one of the goals we have. So in summary, we have this uh, lofty requirements, very high video quality, 100% uh, uptime for both video on demand and live, and less than 24 hour turnaround time. So next, I just wanted to talk about some of the projects that we're currently working on, uh, that we recently completed, um, and that are coming up. Um, <coughs> uh, we recently completed uh, AV build-outs in our 10 busiest classrooms. Uh, we have both a primary and a secondary capture agent in each one. Um, <coughs> Kenny and Gabe will be talking about that. Uh, one very significant move for us is that we moved our entire Matterhorn infrastructure into the cloud, specifically, <coughs> excuse me, into Amazon's AWS. Um, so it, we were driven by a variety of different factors, uh, but <coughs> the most noticeable one was, was performance. When we were running in our own cluster locally, we were running into compute problems and then we ran into I.O. problems. When we moved into Amazon, those problems just vanished. Um, you, you pay a pretty penny for their service, but you can have as many machines as you want, literally on demand, literally with a click of a button. Um, <coughs> so, uh, so, right, so, so this improved our performance dramatically. Uh, we had, we were at some times having a single hour of input video take 20 hours of processing time on our uh, terrestrial or sort of local uh, uh, clusters. Um, when we moved into the cloud, that was chopped by tenfold, and it's now about two hours for each hour of input. Uh, another project <coughs> that, that came out at the beginning of the semester was we took the Paella player and sort of skinned it in the, what we like to believe is a very polished, smooth uh, uh, display. Um, <coughs> Reinhardt and Jay have been working on various visualization tools. Uh, Reinhardt will be giving a talk on Friday, I mentioned, but essentially <coughs> he has a visualizer of all the workflows that are currently and previously have, have run. So you can easily th see things like, oh, <coughs> uh, 10 ingests happened at the same time. Or you can very quickly, with just a look, see, oh, the archive operation, in our case, is taking dramatically longer than the transcode, so something seems funny there. Uh, so it's, it's a great, <coughs> it's another angle into the internals of what go, what's going on at Matterhorn. Uh, we, we plan to use, continue to use this to optimize performance um, for our cluster. <coughs> so now that we're in AWS, um, <clears throat> one of the challenges is we want to be able to spin up clusters and spin them down uh, relatively quickly in an entirely automated way. So <coughs> um, <coughs> we want to get to a point where uh, anyone on the planet wants to spin up an AWS, a, a Matterhorn cluster, they run a script and that provisions everything. So provisioning in the cloud is a little bit different than provisioning uh, in a local data center. You li literally uh, configure <coughs> the network as part of your configuration. So your automated scripts build from, you know, uh, indicate how many machines there should be, indicate what the networking should be between them, uh, what access policy should be. It's, it's really quite powerful. Uh, Phoebe and Root just finished talking about live streaming. Um, complete with live demo. Uh, another project which just completed is uh, multiple bit rates. So we wanted to be able to support <coughs> students on very low connections uh, all the way up to on campus very high connections. So AWS is awesome because it eliminated all our compute and I.O. problems. Uh, it costs a fortune though. So, so this is one of the trade-offs. So uh, we've been pouring a lot more effort into 
how to reduce AWS costs. So, uh, so uh, <clears throat> well, yeah, more on more on that in a, in a little while. Um, uh, Greg Logan is working for us on sort of weighted job dispatching. So right now, <clears throat> uh, some jobs in your workflow are very compute intensive and take hours, like uh, transcoding from one format to another. Other operations are actually very quick, maybe a minute, maybe a few seconds. So the idea is <clears throat> you give a relative compute weight uh, to each job. So the big jobs would have a large weight, the little jobs would have a small weight. And then the scheduler can pack uh, <clears throat> pack lots of small jobs onto a single worker or can dedicate uh, lots of compute for each of the transcode operations. <coughs> um, another thing uh, we did was uh, the new Epifan Perl box um, has been productive in our tests. And uh, we wrote basically the shim code to be able to use their web UI and control it from Matterhorn. Uh, so uh, what's coming up next, uh, we need to integrate with our LMS, which is Canvas. Uh, hopefully we can work with Berkeley on that. Um, we need disaster recovery. The, the cloud gives you extraordinary options for disaster recovery. If you're willing to pay more, they can make it more and more reliable. Um, <clears throat> and of course, at some point, we'll be integrating the new admin UI as well. So one of the one of the, the 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 hopes is that we will be able to optimize AWS costs dramatically by having the workers horizontally scale. So the idea is <coughs> normally you can run with zero workers. Uh, then let's say ten uh, jobs ingest all at the same time. You could spin up thirty two um, or ten thirty two core worker core nodes as workers, so each transcode can happen on a dedicated node. Now, those nodes cost about $2 an hour, but if you're only running them for exactly the duration of your transcodes, uh, you can actually get things uh, shipped <coughs> in remarkable order um, because you can run them all in parallel. And then as soon as you're done, you just shut down the worker nodes. So there's a lot of potential there. Um, both for scaling and for cost savings, of course. So one of the ways we hope to achieve 100% reliability is redundancy. Um, so right now, in each classroom, we have a primary capture agent and a secondary capture agent. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at more devices, exploring more options. Um, the way we think about it, video demand and live are kind of different products, and so there may be boxes that are really good as a redundant uh, live box, <clears throat> and there may be other boxes that are better, better for video on demand. And then uh, there are many, many other projects. Actually, if I could. Uh, so <clears throat> we use Trello to organize our tasks. Uh, so I, d I don't really, you don't need to read what's on here, but let me show you that each column here is a de developer, and each developer has a number of tasks. And then you scroll down, and the point is there are, there are many, many projects that are currently active or on our roadmap coming forward. Um, So uh, another project that we're uh, eager to get some, some progress on is some kind of portable capture agent setup. So capture agent plus AV gear that could be transported to rooms that don't have a Matterhorn uh, capture agent in the classroom. Uh, Harvard is enormous. There are a massive number of classrooms. Uh, even by my boldest estimates, we're not gonna get to all of them. Uh, there's always gonna be a lecture in some room that doesn't have a capture agent. Um, we hope those are the exception, but we need to provide some kind of mechanism to handle that. I just want to reassure everyone that, as always, uh, we, we are, are committed to um, contributing back all of our code, uh, or all code possible, to the community. 
who we believe very much that the community is is a key um, asset for justifying the Matterhorn itself. Finally, I just want to encourage you to all collaborate with us. Uh, we've had some uh, very useful collaboration so far. We'd, we'd like to have more. Um, we're a friendly bunch. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so please reach out to me in person, uh, online, or, or to any of the other developers that are here in person. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, oh. <laughs> Questions? Uh, just thinking about uh, rooms where you haven't got latch ca latch cap uh, you haven't got capture agents in. Yeah. You thought about just putting having uh, IP based streaming devices that you can not necessarily have the capture agent there, but ah. centralized capture agents and using uh, the network. Yeah, I mean. Uh, there have been all kinds of uh, wonderful ideas, like we should run fiber from every classroom uh, to a central uh, a capture room. Um, those solutions, in our experience, are either very cheap and, as a result, quite uh, unreliable, or very expensive um, and, and thus difficult to, to get funding for. Um, <coughs> I do have to say, though, Lars's work on uh, cheaper capture agents. We're, we're always we're interested in a broad spectrum of devices for different use cases, right? Like uh, for our uh, premier classrooms, we need extremely high quality, very high reliability. Um, but maybe for smaller rooms, uh, we could use something cheaper as well. Uh. Um, cool. Okay. Um, because you've got these redundant uh, capture agents, um, are they both though dependent on the same um, sources, or have they got independent sources? They got independent video feeds. For Great them? question. Spoken like someone who works with this kind of stuff every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> right, <coughs> right now the AV inputs are a single input path. Uh, <coughs> in our experience. That's not usually what's broken down so far. Um, if it does start but, to happen, but you've got a hundred percent, you've got a hundred percent targets. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, we'll have to see. That currently, that's not our. That's not on the list of major optimizations we need. Um, I could see it happening down the road for sure. Yeah. Um, thanks. So your work with uh, Amazon AWS, are you anticipating that the cost of that will come down to reasonable levels, as in reasonable an institution <laughs> other than Harvard might be tempted to go that route? I, I believe so. So um, the vast majority of our expense is for these high-powered worker nodes. Mm -hmm. So if we have horizontal scaling, uh, that should dramatically reduce costs regardless of how big your worker nodes are. Um, <clears throat> you could, of course, you don't have to run, so, uh, for example, for our needs and our turnaround time and uh, the very high quality MES files that we have, we have to, for example, get instances that all have 10 gig interfaces. Those are expensive. Um, uh, if your fi MES files aren't quite as big, if your output files aren't quite as big, or if you can afford to wait a little longer, um, that, that's another way to save, uh, to save money. Um, there are also interesting things like <clears throat> uh, in Amazon's cloud, you can at any point spin up an, an instance of any size, but you, you pay a substantial price. Uh, if you can wait and use one of their machines, they're called spot instances, um, wait until there's excess capacity, they can save you 80, 90% on your bill. So for example, if you could wait a longer time to transcode your videos, or if there are some formats of the video, like you release a, a single sort of desktop version, and then you convert to other formats in the background, you could potentially do that with cheaper instances. Um, I'll let you know how the, how, how the cost work comes to, comes down. Uh, it's Amazon has really been a godsend for us. Uh, it it just makes operations tasks. Uh, 
Um, literally every Amazon function <coughs> has a command line interface, so you can program everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic. Thank you all very much. Oh, we What compute tasks take up most of that time? Are mm -hmm. you just uh, rescaling the videos or OCR or what? Uh, it's uh, transcoding the videos to different formats. So uh, our MES files are um, often gigabytes, tens of gigabytes, and then we have two of them, one for the presenter and one for the presentation. Um, and then you transcode that to uh, three different formats, so you have six different transcodes that need to happen. Um, <coughs> that's the most compute intensive. Uh, I'm sort of delighted to say um, that our current bottleneck is actually humans. Uh, the production staff who do the editing, who do the shooting, um, at this point the, the system is faster than humans are. Uh, so our real bottleneck in the 24 hour turnaround time is uh, them having time to edit. Thank you all so much.